Guys, plain and simple, in this video, I want to answer the question, is Python good for web development? And if so, how do you use it for web development? Now, I am in a good place to answer this because for the last few months now, I've been coding my own startup. All of the backend logic has been done in Django's framework, which is probably Python's most popular and most complex, uh, most capable backend framework for web development. There is a few others like Flask and FastAPI to name a few. They are less complicated, they are less capable, but for many of you starting out, that would probably be the right choice. And for many small projects, which I absolutely recommend doing if you're considering this, uh, Flask and FastAPI would probably be the better choice. Now, firstly, what the heck is web development? I really want to explain what this is because although a lot of you, you know, know the term sort of, uh, I really want to explain what it actually means. So firstly, we have front end and back end. Front end is, you know, the HTML, which is the structure of the page. We have CSS, which styles it, makes it look different depending on what uh, view you're kind of looking for. Like YouTube has a particular style, Facebook has a particular style that's done through CSS and of course the HTML to structure it. And there's JavaScript files, which is uh, it does a few things. Uh, it can do some pretty stuff like automating HTML and CSS on the front end. You can also do kind of some logic and calls uh, through those through buttons, for example, as well. Okay, so that's kind of what the front end means. If you're a front end engineer, then you would work with, say, the front end JavaScript, HTML, and CSS files. And of course, you'd have to still talk to the back end team. Who is the backend team? Well, it's all the stuff that is on the logic and kind of the routing end. Routing meaning if you go to youtube.com, that is the base or index page. And so they have to figure out the logic. Okay, if you went to the base page, what do we want to grab for you? Um, of course, we want it to look fairly similar for everybody, but if you're logged in, we can get the logic on uh, what videos we want to show to you and, uh, and a lot of other stuff, depending on if you're signed in or not. And if, if you are not signed in, then they will have logic that is for a base user in a base uh, in whatever location you have to be in. Of course, they can track your public IP as well, and they probably do that. Okay, so uh, backend logic is about routing, which is figuring out how to go between the different pages. If you go to the home directory, what do we bring you? If we go to, if you click on a particular video, uh, what style HTML, CSS, JavaScript do we want to bring to you there? What database calls do we want to do? Do you need to query? Do you need to uh, update something in the database? Do you need to do something with the neural network for kind of the, the video lookup idea, um, the suggestion platform? You probably do. Okay. So that's the idea. The front end people are going to work on more sort of styles and interactive uh, interactability within the website. The back end people are going to do more of the logic, the database lookups, that kind of thing, the algorithmic stuff. Um, and then together, if you want to be a full stack engineer, then you know you work on both those things. So I guess right now I've been a full stack engineer for the last little while. Okay, so. Uh, I talked about two things there, front end and back end. Python is only good at one of those things. Uh, in fact, it's basically useless at uh, one of those things. For back end, uh, if you use Django in particular, you can make the database all done in Python. Basically, you have to, you should still know base SQL and relational database or other types of database logic. Um, although the default, it's just a standard, pretty standard relational database. And so you can write that all in Python, which is really, really cool. You just have to, whenever you make an update to like a table or a column or whatever, uh, you just do a quick migrate in Django and then your database is, is up to date. That's really cool because it means that all of your routing logic, all that stuff where it's like, if you go to the index page if you go to click on a video you can write all of that kind of logic to bring back the particular pages in python of course you still need to return html css and optionally javascript files so you're going to need to know that as well um, but all the logic is done in python which is really cool um, and all the database stuff is done, is done in python as well so the back end stuff is handled very 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 well if you're comfortable with python you should be able to do that no problem uh, however uh, Python is essentially useless in the front end. Uh, and to do more complex things, you are going to need, not just want, but pretty much need. Uh, there's some like very, very weird loops about using like Pyodide and weird stuff without they're forcing Python to be useful in the browser. At this stage, I would not recommend it personally. Maybe in 10 years, we'll take a look. Um, five years, not sure. There were, a lot of people were working on it. Anaconda is doing some cool stuff. Um, but anyways, Python is mostly useful, mostly only useful in the back end. In the front end, uh, you don't necessarily need to learn JavaScript. You do need to learn HTML and CSS to be useful. If you don't know either of those two things, 
along with uh, what you'll see is Django's scripting engine or uh, Jinja 2 in Flask or Fast API or something, whatever it is. Um, that basically just allows you to insert variables and to insert cu custom code in into HTML, which can be really useful. And then you can make a pretty good website. You can do all the Python backend with database and stuff, and then you can return some complex uh, HTML and CSS, and you don't need any JavaScript in particular. However, uh, if you are going to do more complex things, especially if you are going to try to do this within a different company, if you're going to use do your own company and your own startup, then what I've been doing is just fine. I use JavaScript absolutely when I only when I have to, which is I get ChatGPT's help to write some JavaScript code for me, or I get some stuff like uh, from like a payment uh, provider, that kind of thing. You know, you don't actually need JavaScript uh, for these Django websites. For Fast API and Flask, also not really. Any of these Python base backend frameworks, you can get away with just HTML templating and CSS and then Python in the backend. Um, however, if you were to work at a different company, then like if you're actually trying to get a job in this, you can do a quick search, like just search for uh, like Django, for example, most people aren't gonna, most companies aren't gonna write actual applications in like Flask or Fast API. Most of them would be in Django, most likely. So you can do a quick LinkedIn search on uh, Django versus, say, Node.js. Node.js. It's uh, it's basically analogous uh, between Django and Node.js. Except I don't think Node.js has the same sort of database plugin backend. There's probably something similar though with an extension. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If you are to work in a company, uh, you can do a search for Django versus Node.js, for example, or, no, or Django versus uh, JS Web Developer. The, the JavaScript stuff is going to be abundantly more, uh, and that's because like you can think about it like basically these Python libraries were invented for people like me that are really stubborn that basically just love Python and they're so annoyingly in love with Python that they're refusing to do other things. Uh, and this is fine because honestly, switching between languages can be really, really slow. Like, you know, just memorizing the different syntax. Of course, the languages are pretty similar, Python and JS, but memorizing the differences between array length and um, and just working with objects and that kind of thing, it, it is slow and it will confuse you to switch between them, even if you're relatively comfortable with both. Uh, it is a bit of a slowdown. What it is best to do in general is to learn one language and try to do that for everything which is why uh, J JavaScript is so freaking popular right now is because for the entirety of web programs and for honestly a lot of just local scripting stuff as well, um, as you'll see through like Node Package Manager, NPM, uh, JavaScript is used freaking all over the place. It's very good. Um, a lot of people are kind of annoyed with it in a ways because it's a bit of a finicky language. It's, it's a bit awkward and there's things that you just wouldn't expect at times, um, but it's fine and you could absolutely learn it. It's the probably the most popular language in the world or maybe second compared to Python. Python is great for data science, of course. That's what my channel is about, if you didn't know that. Um, so that's why I know it. It's great for normal coding. It's great for, uh, it's the language for data science. Um, however, it's not the language that is controlled by the browser if you go to again youtube.com and you click um, f12 and you look at the console or you look at some scripts going on uh, it's all javascript your front end is being controlled by javascript and of course there's some now some frameworks that are letting python kind of automate the javascript or automate the browser but um, it, it's much easier if you can just write in javascript because these full websites, full web development programs are being written solely in, well, I mean, HTML, CSS as well, but um, solely in JavaScript code aside from that. And so that's really incredible. It is a huge boost if you can just use one language. However, I've seen personally that you can really, really get away with just using Django. Uh, so that'll do the Python backend and the database um, and the routing, and then you can, in the front end, do HTML scripting and CSS. You can get away without doing too much JavaScript. You'll see it a little bit, um, but uh, but you won't have to write that much of it. It's not going to be that required, uh, most likely. It depends what you're doing. It depends how involved your interaction. Um, it depends how exciting your website is on the front end, basically. But you likely won't need it. So the overall answer is you can get away with it. Uh, it's, it's definitely good enough. Um, however, if you were starting out and you were wanted to be a web developer, you know this, like it's just, you wanna learn one language, you wanna be good at it, you wanna get better and better at it, you probably wanna do web development. 
you probably just want to learn JavaScript. However, if you are like me that are very good at Python and are now very stubborn about leaving it, uh, something like Django and maybe Flask and FastAPI is a really good choice for you because you can be comfortable still uh, and you can get away with you know 99% of, of a great website and then you can do a little bit of JavaScript if you want to. I hope that answered the question. Subscribe if you're not already and uh, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.